Hi, I'm Avital Harari, endocrine surgeon at UCLA Health. Today I'd like to chat with you about Graves' disease and treatment options, focusing on when surgery is considered and what is important to think about when getting ready for surgery. To understand your treatment options, you should understand a bit about the disease itself. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease. That means that your body's immune system attacks your thyroid gland, and that causes too much thyroid hormone to be produced. Graves' disease is the most common cause of hyperthyroidism, which means high thyroid hormone levels, in the United States. If it is not treated, this disease can lead to heart failure, heart irregularities, and osteoporosis. It may cause symptoms such as a racing heartbeat, hand tremors, trouble sleeping, weight loss, muscle weakness, and feeling extremely hot. It can also cause swelling and bulging of the eyes. The diagnosis of hyperthyroidism is made based on your symptoms, findings during a physical exam, and laboratory tests. These tests include thyroid hormone levels and the presence of immune system antibodies that attack your thyroid. Once you have a diagnosis of Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism, it's important to get treated so that you will not have lasting effects. Usually, your first treatment is with medications, such as antithyroid drugs, which are called methimazole, or PTU. Antithyroid drugs are usually given in patients who have a high chance of remission. These include women, patients with mild disease, smaller thyroid enlargements, or low levels of antibodies. These drugs do not cure Graves' hyperthyroidism, but may control it. If methimazole is chosen, it's usually given for about 12 to 18 months, after which it can be stopped if your lab levels are normal at that time. But if your lab levels remain high past 24 months, the chances of remission are much lower. In that case, long-term treatment of hyperthyroidism with antithyroid drugs may be considered. However, if your hyperthyroidism continues, your doctor may recommend treatment with either radioactive iodine or surgery. Radioactive iodine, or RAI, is a radioactive pill that damages thyroid cells. It's usually successful and can cure about 80% of Graves' disease patients after just one dose, though 20% will require more than one dose. Although generally well tolerated, there may be side effects to RAI, such as neck tenderness, swollen salivary glands, loss of taste, dry eyes, dry mouth, and excessive tearing from the eyes. Also, it can worsen Graves' eye disease, and there is a slight long-term risk of lymphoma or leukemia in folks that have had radioactive iodine. Surgery in the form of a total thyroidectomy, or removal of the entire thyroid, leads to a rapid cure of hyperthyroidism for those with Graves' disease. How do you know if surgery is right for you? Well, some folks should not get radioactive iodine and should consider surgery for treatment. If your thyroid has nodules in it, radioactive iodine can cause these nodules to become cancerous and is therefore not recommended. So patients who have suspected or actual thyroid cancer or a nodule should have a thyroidectomy. That's why an ultrasound of your thyroid should be done before talking about your treatment options. If you're pregnant, have young kids, or want to have children in the near future, exposure to radiation should be avoided as it could harm a fetus or your children. Surgery is also preferred in patients with Graves' eye disease. Other folks who should consider surgery are those of you who are interested in a quick or continued reduction of thyroid hormone levels, or any patient with symptoms due to thyroid enlargement, and those of you who may have had severe side effects from the antithyroid drugs. If surgery or removal of your thyroid is a treatment that you have chosen, the surgery should be done by a skilled surgeon with experience doing thyroid surgeries, as this will reduce your risk of complications. A few things are important to understand when preparing for thyroid surgery. It's important that your thyroid hormone levels are controlled before surgery so that during surgery, you avoid something called thyroid storm. That can lead to very high blood pressures and possible heart failure or even stroke. You may also be given iodine drops for the 10 days before surgery. These drops do not contain any radiation, but may help decrease the blood flow to the thyroid before surgery, which is helpful both to prevent thyroid storm and to make the thyroid gland easier to remove. It's important to also understand that though surgery is an immediate cure, it does not come without risks. A small percentage of people may have a raspy voice after surgery, which is usually temporary but can be permanent. You may also have low calcium levels after surgery. That could be due to problems with the parathyroid glands or more likely due to having bone hunger due to Graves' disease. We usually treat this low calcium with calcium supplements and it's usually temporary, but it can be permanent in 1% of folks. There's a risk of bleeding, which can usually be treated conservatively, but may require another surgery. It's also important to know that if you receive radioactive iodine or surgery for your Graves' disease, you will develop hypothyroidism. 
That means low thyroid hormone levels, which will require that you take a thyroid hormone supplement for the rest of your life. Your doctor should discuss each of these treatment options with you, including the plan, its benefits, potential side effects, recovery, and costs. Although each treatment has its pros and cons, most patients will find one treatment plan that is right for them. Hyperthyroidism due to Graves' disease is in general controllable with treatment that is almost always successful. For more information, please call or visit our website. Thank you for watching.